Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about um, Hamilton's economic plan, what his plan is. You need to know what his plan is. Uh, there's four key components, and by the time we're done with these notes, you should know what those are and uh, kind of recognize those. Um, then finally, also, the, what is the purpose of the Bank of the United States? Uh, that is, we want to understand that. Why was that there? Why did he create it? Because then we're going to continue to look at that um, because the Bank of the United States is going to be a very controversial issue for um, for the next several decades of, of U.S. history, and so it's going to come back to us time and again. Uh, and then the kind of the questions that we're kind of thinking about as we're learning about this is, why was Hamilton's plan to pay off state debts and establish a national bank controversial? So why were people upset about it? Why did some people not like this idea? And then kind of do you agree with Hamilton? Was it a good idea? Or do you agree with his um, opponents that said it was a bad idea? So kind of keep those things in mind. You're trying to form your opinion on whether you think they're a good idea or not. So if some key words to understand, um, some economic vocabulary. First, debt. Um, money, you, most of you are probably familiar, money, is, uh, debt is money owed to someone else. Uh, and But you may not be as familiar with the word deficit. So if you, you can think about deficit as... Let's imagine that you make $2,000 a month and, or you have bills for $2,000 a month, but you make $1,800 a month. Well, you have a deficit of $200 a month. So I'm going to, if I'm going to, if I've got bills for $2,000 and I make $1,800, I'm going to have to borrow $200 a month just to pay my bills, just to keep my rent, just to pay uh, for the lights, just to pay for groceries. And so that is what we call deficit spending. I am planning on spending more than I make. If I have a deficit, it will lead to debt. A deficit is the plan to spend more than you make, and therefore you plan on borrowing. Debt is what results from that. So um, a tax on imports, that's a tariff. You should be familiar with that term already. Uh, you'll continue to hear about tariffs uh, really throughout the rest of the year. Um, gross domestic product, um, and you'll often see it as GDP, uh, and that's the total value of everything produced by a country each year. Gross domestic product. It's not how much we collect in taxes. It's not that. It's how much we produce of value in the nation. Um, that would include like goods that we produce. That would include um, both physical goods, but also um, what we what you might consider um, not something that like tangible, but something that is produced like software. Software, you know, you don't touch, you can't touch software, but you use software, and it is it is something that is produced. So that would be an example. That would be part of our gross domestic domestic product. The things that we produce here of value. Um, that is our GDP, all of that added together. And then per capita, you will often see when we talk about economics, um, you'll talk about how much per capita, how much is the debt per capita or something like that. That means per person, divided it out, if you divide it out per person. So Washington's financial plan. Um, if you'll, or, or Hamilton's financial plan, you'll remember that Washington's big problem when he took office was that the nation was deeply in debt, and that was a result of the, the American Revolution. And so because of that revolution, that we had to borrow money to fight that war and to win that war, well, now we've got to pay that back. And that's been a problem we haven't been able to do under the Articles of Confederation. Alexander Hamilton... It was named by President Washington as his Secretary of the Treasury. And so he, it is his job to really come up with a financial plan, a financial system, an economic system for the nation, and he does so. Uh, and there's really four key components here. Um, pay off state debts, establish a national bank, put a tax on whiskey, and create protective tariffs or tax on imports. Um, these are the key components that we're going to focus on. There's other things, but these are the main ones that we want to focus on. And really, today we're going to focus on um, just the first two of those. Uh, the federal government would pay off state debts. So if this, each state had fought, helped to fight the war, um, the American Revolution, and some states had borrowed a lot of money, some states hadn't borrowed as much, and they borrowed money to fight this war, and so 
it, it was to the benefit of the whole United States. And so pe many people said, hey, we need to pay this debt. Um, the United States, Hamilton says, the, it's, it was for us as a nation, so we need to pay this these debts. Um, others said, wait, 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 especially in the South, they didn't like this idea because the Southern states, in many cases, had already paid their debts. And so they didn't want to help to pay. They'd already paid off their debts from the re revolution, and now they're going to help pay off um, other states' debts like Mar Massachusetts. They didn't, that didn't seem right to them. Um, and so there was a big debate over whether that would happen or not. He also, Hamilton also wants to establish a national bank. And this is really, um, what is the purpose of this national bank? Uh, what you need to understand here is that the, the purpose of the bank is one, it's going to fund the debt. And what does that mean to fund the debt? Um, the, the national bank will, will people invest that money in that bank with an expectation of getting a, a return on their investment, but that money can be used to pay um, interest on the debt that they already have. And then they can also make loans and collect interest and pay debts. And so the bank will make money as, as that happens. And so that will that is how they will be able to fund the debt. Um, it'll also be where um, taxes are collected and and housed, and so that will once again be um, available to pay off debts. And so Hamilton sees that and recognizes that the Bank of the United States is very useful um, in creating and in, in being able to handle the economic system. Um, Thomas Jefferson is opposed to the National Bank. He says it's not necessary. Um, the National Bank is not necessary, and so therefore we do not need it. The Constitution says we can only do um, these things, and the National Bank is not in the list of things that we can do. Hamilton says, no, it's not in the list, but it is necessary for um, doing these other things. We, we are supposed to collect taxes. We've got to put those taxes somewhere. Put them in the national bank. We've got we can uh, so that's that's a purpose that we are supposed to do, and so the bank is useful for that. Well, Jefferson says we can do it without a national bank, so we don't need a national bank, and therefore it's not constitutional. Uh, and so that's the big debate back and forth: is it constitutional or not? Uh, and so those are kind of the key issues, the key division. Um, in our uh, uh, over uh, Hamilton's financial plan, uh, we'll talk about the tax on whiskey and the tariffs uh, in another in a later video. Uh, so, what do they do about these? Do they pass the Nash, Do they pay off the state's debts? Yes, ultimately they do pay off the state debts. Um, but the southern states, in order to go along with it, say, "Hey, we want the capital to be in the South." And so, Washington D.C. is built in. Maryland, uh, kind of right there on the Potomac River, um, right there on the border of Maryland and Virginia, and so it is in the South, and that is part of the agreement. It, they'll, they'll, the Southern states will go along with this um, financial plan to pay off the debts if um, the the capital is moved to this region, and so it goes from New York to Washington D.C. Um, the cap uh, and the White House and Capitol building and all these things will be built. Uh, George Washington never lives in the White House. Um, it is not complete until after he start, finishes out his two terms. So uh, that is Hamilton's financial plan. And that is kind of some of the key things. We'll continue to look at these issues um, over the coming few several, next several days.